In this video, we're going to try and find an unbiased estimator for the variance of x. Now, we know that the variance of x is equal to the expectation of x minus e of x squared. And because we know that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator for the expectation, we might think that an unbiased estimator might be equal to 1 over n times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. So in other words, the average of the sum of squares of the xi minus x bars. And this is somehow analogous to the formula for the expectation in that we've got x minus e of x. We're replacing the expectation of x here by a sample mean, and we're replacing this expectation with a sample mean of the x minus x bar squares. Now, we know that the expectation of our random variable x can be written as mu x, and the variance of our random variable x can be written as sigma squared x. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to consider the variance of x. And the variance of x is written as either the expectation of x minus e of x squared, or the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x all squared. Now, the expectation of x all squared is just the expectation of x, which is mu of x squared. And similarly, the variance of x is just can you just, just be written as sigma squared. So that means that we can rewrite this expression as being equal to sigma squared x is equal to the expectation of x squared minus mu x squared, or the expectation of x squared is equal to sigma squared plus mu squared. Now we've observed n independent and identically distributed observations of x. So we've got x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn. And we're assuming that these are independent and identically distributed. So the expectation of xi is equal to the expectation of x, or mu x, for all observations of x. The variance of xi is equal to sigma squared x, and the covariance between xi and xj is equal to 0 for all i not equal to j. Now, we know that if the observations are independent and identically distributed, then the variance of the sample mean is just given by the variance of x divided by the number of observations. So this is going to be equal to sigma squared x over n. So we know that for the sample mean. We also know that we can also calculate the variance of the sample mean by looking at the expectation of that sample mean squared minus the expectation of the sample mean all squared. Now we know that the expectation of the sample mean, because the observations are iid, is just going to be equal to the expectation of x or mu of x. So the expectation of the sample mean squared is going to be equal to mu x squared. We also know that the variance of the sample mean can be written as sigma squared x over n. So this means that we can rearrange this to give us our expectation of x bar squared to give us that the expectation of the square of the sample mean is going to be equal to sigma squared x over n plus the square of the expectation of x. Now we have an estimator that is a candidate to be a, an estimator for the variance of x. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to try, try and find the expectation of this estimator to try and see whether or not this is equal to the variance of x or not. Now, the first stage to doing this is we're going to try and manipulate this into something that we can easily take expectations of. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and expand out our brackets. So we've got the sum of the x minus x bar squared. So this is just going to be equal to 1 over n times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n 
of, expanding out the brackets, we're going to have an xi squared term. That's from squaring the xi term. We're going to have a minus x bar all squared term. So that's going to be a plus x bar squared. And then we've got cross product terms of minus x bar times by xi and xi times by minus x bar, both of which is minus x bar times by xi. So we've got two lots of x bar times by xi. Now, we've got the sum of three elements. It's three things added together, and the sum of a sum is just equal, we can split this up into three separate summations. So we can write this as being equal to 1 over n times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of xi squared. Then we've got plus the sum of the x bar squared. The x bar is just constant within the summation, so this is going to be x bar squared plus x bar squared plus x bar squared n times. So that's going to be n lots of x bar squared. And then similarly, this x bar is also constant within the summation, so we can take it outside of the summation. The 2 is constant within the summation, so we can take that outside as well. So that's going to be minus 2 lots of x bar times by the sum of the x's. Now you might say for a second, hang on, the subscript has changed on the x. We've changed from xi to xj. Why? The only reason is to indicate that this xj belongs to this summation and this xi squared belongs to this summation. Now, we're just going to take an aside for a moment and consider this last term, this minus 2 x bar times by the sum of the x's. We know that the sample mean is just equal to 1 over n times by the sum of the x's. So if we multiply left and right by n, that gives us that n lots of x bar is just equal to the sum of the x's. So we can substitute in this sum of the x's as being equal to n lots of x bar. So we can rewrite our expression as being equal to 1 over n times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of x squared plus n lots of x bar squared minus 2 lots of n x bar times by x bar, but that x bar times by x bar is just the same as x bar squared. So we can take these two terms together, n x bar squared minus 2n x bar squared. This is going to be equal to 1 over n times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of xi squared minus n lots of x bar squared. So our estimator sigma hat squared can be rewritten as 1 over n times by the sum of the xi squared minus n lots of x bar squared. So in order to evaluate whether or not this is unbiased or not, we want to take the expectation of sigma hat squared to try and see whether or not this is equal to the true variance of x. So this is going to be equal to the expectation of 1 over n times by the sum of the x squared minus n lots of x bar squared. Now the first thing that we can do is we know that the expectation of any constant times by a random variable is that constant times by the expectation. So we can take that constant, the 1 over n, outside of our expectations. This is going to be equal to 1 over n times by the expectation of the sum of the x squared minus n lots of x bar squared. Now we also know that the expectation of any sum is equal to the sum of the expectations, so we can um, br bring this expectation inside the brackets to give us this is equal to 1 over n times by the expectation 
of the sum of the x squared minus the expectation of n lots of x bar squared. And we can do that again because we've got the expectation of another sum here. So this is going to be equal to 1 over n times by the sum of the expectations of xi squared minus, and because n is a constant, we can take it outside of our expectation. It's going to be n lots of the expectation of x bar squared. Now, what else do we know? We know that the observations are iid, so the expectation of xi squared is going to be equal to the expectation of x squared for all observations. So the expectation of xi squared is going to be equal to the expectation of x squared. But we know from earlier that the expectation of x squared is just equal to sigma squared x plus mu x squared. We also know that the expectation of x bar squared is equal to sigma squared x over n plus mu x squared. So we can rewrite this. We've got the sum of the expectation of x squared. That's going to be n lots of the expectation of x squared. So we've got n lots of the expectation of x squared because the observations are iid each of the expectation of xi squared is equal to the expectation of x squared. Then we've got minus n lots of the expectation of x bar squared. Now, both of our terms are multiplied by n and we're dividing by n, so we can get rid of the n term to give us that this is equal to the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x bar squared. Substituting in our values from earlier, we know that the expectation of x squared is equal to sigma squared x plus mu x squared, or the square of the expectation of x. And then we're going to subtract the expectation of x bar squared, which is equal to sigma squared x over n plus mu x squared. Well, we've got mu x squared minus mu x squared, so those cancel, leaving us with this is equal to sigma squared x minus sigma squared x over n, which can be simplified to this is equal to sigma squared x times by n minus 1 over n. So the expectation of our estimator is not equal to the variance of x, but is equal to the variance of x multiplied by n minus 1 over n. So this is not equal to the variance of x, so therefore our estimator is a biased estimator. Now whilst our estimator sigma hat squared is a biased estimator, the expectation of sigma hat squared is equal to n minus 1 over n times by the variance of x, this gives us a root to an unbiased estimator for the variance of x, because we know that the expectation of any constant times by a random variable is equal to that constant times by the expectation of that random variable. So if we want to find an estimator whose expectation is equal to sigma squared to the variance of x, then what we could do is we could multiply this sigma hat squared by some constant to get rid of the n minus 1 over n. So what we can do instead is we can multiply sigma hat squared by n over n minus 1. So if we were to find the expectation of n over n minus 1 times by sigma hat squared, this is just going to be equal to n over n minus 1 times by the expectation of sigma hat squared, which is equal to n over n minus 1, times by 
n minus 1 over n times by sigma squared x. And n minus 1 over n minus 1 cancel, n over n cancel, just giving us this is equal to sigma squared x. So if we do multiply this sigma hat squared by n over n minus 1, then we'll get an estimator that is unbiased. So let's multiply n over n minus 1 by sigma hat squared, which is just equal to n over n minus 1 times by 1 over n times by the sum of the x minus x bar squared, which is equal to 1 over n minus 1 times by the sum of the x minus x bar squared, which is often referred to as s squared, which is an unbiased estimator of the population variance of x.